Good morning, Thailand. My name is Alex, and I have some news updates from around the land of smiles for you today, this Wednesday, June 12th. And we're going to start with our first story that has us talking about a Thai fugitive who was arrested after a 17-hour speedboat chase in Bali. That's right. So Thai fugitive Chawa Liet, wanted for multiple murders and drug trafficking, was arrested in Bali after escaping from Thai detention. Using a fake Indonesian identity card, he fled to Indonesia's Aceh province via a 17-hour speedboat trip from India. Now, Indonesian police captured him in Bali, seizing fake documents and four cell phones. Thai authorities are investigating his local accomplices. Now, Chawa Liet will be extradited to Thailand on a military plane where he faces charges including the attempted murder of police officers and drug trafficking. The operation to recapture him cost around 10 million baht. But brought to justice, all right? My gosh, that's one of Thailand's most wanted people. Attempted murder of police on the lam, fake identities. Uh, this is kind of like a, a spy movie, but it's always nice to hear that uh, someone like that is uh, not running around causing chaos anymore and will be brought to justice. Uh, extradition. Indonesia and Thailand do have an extradition agreement going back to the 1960s, so fleeing to Bali was not really going to be a safe haven for him in the first place. You can't expect people like this to be too intelligent. Anyways, brought to justice, happy ending to that story. Now, we're going to move on to our next story, which is uh, a bit of a tragic one. So, uh, a fire yesterday broke out at Chatuchak Market, destroyed 118 shops, and killed more than 1,000 animals. That's right, a fire at Chattachok Market's pet section early yesterday morning destroyed 118 shops and killed approximately 1,000 animals. The blaze began around 4.30 a.m., causing chaos as thick smoke filled the area. Deputy Inspector Natapong uh, led a swift response with over 10 fire engines and many volunteers. Despite their efforts, the fire, suspected to be caused by an electrical short circuit, rapidly spread. Witnesses describe desperate escapes with significant losses of rare and exotic animals. No human casualties were reported, however, and authorities are investigating and assessing damages to improve future safety measures. What a nightmare situation, right? All it takes is, this is one of the problems with uh, a lot of the regulations in Southeast Asia and generally. Uh, electrical fires happen, right? We've all seen the Bangkok spaghetti wiring that you see all over the place. And uh, unfortunately, this is a, a, a negative side effect of cutting those corners. Uh, more than a thousand animals killed, millions of bot lost in business, uh, not to mention 118 shops completely destroyed. Uh, hopefully the government can provide some support to these people and uh, hopefully insurance can pay out and uh, bring back some of the livelihood of those affected by this terrible, tragic fire. I guess the good news is no human casualties, um, but uh, definitely there's going to be a lot of pain and suffering for people who were just trying to run their businesses out there. Pretty scary for me. I was at Chattachok Market uh, the day before this happened. So, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I'm glad I got out of there in time. Um, anyways, yeah, Larry says, very sad about the animals. It is. It's devastating news. Nobody likes it when, uh, you know, they're usually... No, they, we, we don't like when pets get killed in movies, certainly not in the news, but uh, it's something that we need to talk about and hopefully we can make uh, these, these kinds of incidents less frequent uh, or not happen at all. All right, uh, yeah, Mojo also says there was a fire there a few years ago, so, uh-oh, <laughs> that's not a, not a positive trend. Get your act together, Chatter Chuck. All right, on to our next story. So uh, guns can be an issue here in Thailand. And in Phuket, a gun brandishing pickup driver threatened a couple during a road rage incident. The road rage incident in Phuket involved a white pickup driver allegedly brandishing a gun and threatening a truck driver and his wife. The couple, traveling on Chao Fa West Road, noticed the erratic pickup, which lacked license plates. The pickup driver brandished a gun and invited them to step out, but they remained inside their truck. They eventually distanced themselves when the pickup entered an underpass. Now, Wichit police are actively searching for the suspect, examining CCTV footage to identify and locate the driver. The incident has heightened concerns about road safety and road rage in the area. Look, this is, like, not the first road rage incident that we have reported here. Uh, and it's especially scary. You know, it's one of those things where... 
you want to get you get angry, right? And and you get heated. And especially if you see someone driving erratic, uh, without license plates and stuff like that, you might want to do something to maybe make the situation safer. But you could be putting yourself in danger, as was the case in this situation. Fortunately, these people got away without any bullets being fired. Uh, but this guy is still on the lam. So uh, be careful out there. Be on the lookout for a white pickup truck without any license plates. That man is uh, wanted. Uh, and but but do be careful. Call the police. Anytime there's a situation like this, uh, this has happened to me in America before. I've seen drunk drivers on the roads. I call the police. I tell them, hey, there's this car doing this bad thing, and you let the professionals handle it because, uh, yeah, you don't want to become a casualty or, you know, a headline in one of my stories. Stay safe, people. <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on to our next story, which has us coming into Bangkok, where police arrest four at a luxury hotel for a drug investigation. So Bangkok police have arrested four individuals, including relatives of a prominent politician at a luxury hotel for a drug investigation. The suspects, Naraset, Taisis, Gricha, and Valis, and Achaliporn, were detained at 11.30 a.m. and are cooperating with the investigation. The arrest was linked to drug possession for personal use. Now, police colonel Unampon stated that the suspects showed no signs of distress and will undergo drug testing. The hotel, known for its family-friendly environment, has not been previously associated with drug parties, but friends of the suspects are monitoring the situation at Makassan Police Station. Oh, you know, it's one of those things like, this wasn't a drug trafficking operation, this was people partying privately. Obviously, drugs are illegal, consuming drugs, buying drugs in Thailand, illegal. Uh, but uh, nice to hear, though, that this situation didn't get escalated, right? They, they got caught. They're immediately cooperative, um, you know, and the, the drugs were for personal use, so they weren't really pushing them to other people. Uh, oftentimes, my, my opinion about a lot of these uh, drug crimes is that, you know, if the victim is only yourself, then uh, that's, that's not... We, we shouldn't throw the book at you. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, a lot of problems in, in American or Western uh, legal systems is people who are addicted to drugs or, or have a drug problem are thrown in with, uh, you know, actual violent criminals and things like that in our, in our justice system. And uh, really, that's not going to help improve this person and make them a better member of society. So I always like the way that the Thai police handle this kind of thing. Th they made the statement like, hey, these guys are being cool, they're being chill about it. And again, that's uh, probably to help uh, alleviate or lighten whatever punishment might be coming their way. Um, so good on Thailand. Uh, and uh, they're obviously sometimes selective enforcement. But, you know, it's case by case. And uh, you, you got to really take, take the situation uh, within its context, I think. <clears throat> Um, all right. Anyways, on to our next one, uh, which is a, a bit of a sad statistic that is coming out of the land of smiles. Uh, now, nearly 30 percent of Thailand's beggars are foreigners. Now, Thailand's Social Development and Human Security Minister, Kun Varawut, revealed that nearly 30% of the country's beggars are foreign-born, with the issue particularly noticeable around Bangkok's major shopping malls. Now, from 2014 to 2024, approximately 8,000 beggars have been arrested, and foreign beggars are deported, while Thai beggars receive career training. Repeat offenders face charges. Some beggars reportedly earn up to 100,000 baht per month in tourist areas. Now, Varawut urged the public to stop giving money to beggars to help combat the problem, highlighting that minimal fines make begging lucrative. Authorities conduct street checks regularly to address the issue. Ah, God, this is always a tough one. 30% foreign-born, and it's, you know, Western people are not immune to this as well. We've seen plenty of people get addicted to drugs and end up on the streets begging for money, for, probably for more drugs. But uh, more than that, it's there's Burmese, there's, there's Vietnamese, there's people coming from other countries as well. Chinese ran big, illegal uh, uh, begging operations here in Thailand as well. So that's the issue, right? It's one of those things where you feel empathy for the person that you're seeing and you want to help them dropping money that that's fine at the same time are there programs in place to actually help these people get off the streets and become functioning uh contributing members of society so uh, a lot of the times there aren't really programs in place where people can uh you know check themselves in make sure they have a bed and a shower and some some sort of training to get them back on their feet so that they can you know, join the rest of us and uh, have a, a fulfilling and meaningful life. 
The other number there, some are earning up to 100000 baht per month. That is... Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that, that's a lot. <laughs> that'll that'll go pretty far here in Thailand. So uh, it's funny in tourist areas. There's got to be some street territory wars going on with that too. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Just be be cautious and make sure that when you're trying to help someone out, you're actually helping them and not perpetuating this uh, ongoing issue that is homelessness in Thailand. <clears throat> All right. Uh, now, <laughs> all right. You know, I like to end things for Thailand with a with a super weird story. So I'm going to do that just now. We have a modern day Lazarus situation as a Thai man rises from the dead and runs three kilometers home. Hmm. Now, in Surin, Thailand, 59-year-old Prung was revived by a medical team after being declared dead. And after regaining consciousness, he refused further treatment, escaped from the ambulance, and ran over three kilometers home. Prung's wife, Sombat, found him unconscious after drinking beer and showering, and this is not his first near-death experience. A similar incident happened years ago. Now, despite the medical team's efforts to take him to the hospital, Prung insisted on going home, wielding a wooden stick to keep them away. He later expressed his sole focus was to get home and not to receive medical attention. Good God, dude, go get checked out. <laughs> you were declared legally dead and then ran three kilometers. I, uh, some people are just built different, man. I don't know about you. But if I have that kind of near-death experience, I'm going to enjoy my ambulance ride and uh, just relax and let them take care of me, make sure everything's okay. My God, you don't even know why, right? Like, why he was declared dead uh, after drinking beer in the shower and then ran three kilometers home. My God, like, uh, blows my mind. But uh, some people uh, ha just have that in them. But seriously, dude, get checked out. That is not okay, uh, especially since this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of it? Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, what would you do if you were revived uh, by a medical team, brought back from the brink of death? Would you run home? <laughs> I don't think that would be on my agenda. All right, guys. Well, uh, that'll do it for our news stories from around the land of smiles today. However, I have some new updates from you uh, from ASEAN now. So uh, obviously now we are covering a wider range of uh, nations. I'm trying to bring you updates from uh, Thailand's neighbors. So uh, we're going to get into it with our first story from Malaysia. Now, Malaysia has hauled 300 tons of trash from rivers near Singapore, mostly plastic. Now, last year, Malaysia collected over 300 tons of trash, primarily plastic, from the Sungai Sukdai, Sungai Tebru rivers, and uh, Johor Bahru as well. The state government launched the Johor Bersi at Sungai program to combat river pollution across all 10 districts. Initiated in 2022, this program aims to clean rivers and raise environmental awareness, and the efforts have improved water quality in five of Johor's polluted rivers, moving them from categories 3 and 4 to categories 2 or higher. This progress is attributed to the Department of Environment's Enforcement and Industry Collaboration, reducing the number of polluted rivers from 14 to 9. Not sure if those 9 are still going to be, you know, probably not safe to drink out of yet, but uh, 300 tons of plastic, man, that's just, uh, uh, it's almost an uh, unimaginable figure, but really just a drop in the bucket for how much pollution is uh, in uh, the area. It's a big problem in Southeast Asia, right? Like, there in the West, there's tons of efforts uh, being put into place to try and get us to reduce our plastic use. Those efforts are not really taking off here in Southeast Asia. Uh, we make fun of it all the time, right? Every time you go to 7-Eleven, you get a plastic cup for your drink that they then put a plastic straw in that they then put into a little plastic carrying bag for you and that's just standard practice that's the sop for almost every fast food restaurant 7-eleven convenience store and that plastic has to go somewhere it usually ends up choking our rivers so good on them for the effort to clean things up but Shame on all of us in this area. We should do our part to try and reduce that waste at the consumer level. So, uh, you know, try not to order the, uh, like, when you order your food, <laughs> get it in the paper uh, cardboard boxes. Don't order your plastic uh, forks and knives. Do your part. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Larry says, plastic pollution is as dangerous as climate change. I would argue, yeah, definitely, man. And uh, clean drinking water and access to these waterways, it's like, should be a public right. So uh, the problem is the public is also causing this problem. So, yeah, it's up to our leaders in government to set policies that guide us in the right direction and hopefully alleviate that issue. 
All right, uh, moving on. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the really crazy turbulent story that resulted in one death a couple of weeks ago. Oh, mm, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago, coming out of Singapore. Uh, but Singapore Airlines offers compensation now to the passengers who were injured by that severe turbulence. That's right, they've announced that they are going to be compensating passengers injured in the severe turbulence on May 20th during flight SQ321 from London to Singapore, which resulted in numerous injuries and one death. Passengers with minor injuries receive $10,000 each, while those with serious injuries requiring long-term care are offered an advance payment of $25,000 as part of their final compensation. All passengers will also be refunded the cost of their tickets. Yeah, duh. And the turbulence struck over Myanmar's Irrawaddy Basin, causing the Boeing 777-300ER to divert to Bangkok. The incident left one passenger dead and several hospitalized, with at least one passenger becoming paralyzed. The turbulence was attributed to rapidly developing thunderstorms. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's going to be enough, Singapore Airlines, especially when, you know, you had a fatality, you had uh, someone become paralyzed, $25,000 as part of their final compensation. That sounds like they're trying to get out of, uh, they're trying to get into a settlement and probably just pay people out and not have to worry about whatever legal action is coming their way. Uh, although I'm not too familiar with how these kinds of legal proceedings would uh, would play out in Singapore. So uh, ho hopefully those uh, passengers who are entitled to compensation can figure out their, what, what they are actually uh, legally entitled to rather than just, you know, acquiescing to the big corporation, take your little payday, and now you've got to deal with paralysis for the rest of your life. Not acceptable in my book. Uh, I hope that uh, these people get the compensation they deserve. Now, I know it was just a tragic accident at the end of the day, um, so I don't really want to place too much blame because it was nothing intended. It's just uh, something that can happen from time to time. However, uh, yeah, there, there has to be consequences <laughs> because uh, we need to make sure that these people are taken care of. That's really the end game. Uh, Anyway, there was, I think it was like 40 people hospitalized from that flight. So uh, be careful in the skies, people. <clears throat> All right. Uh, final story before we uh, dive into the comments and see what you guys have to say. Uh, and it has to do with, uh, yeah, Russia, actually, believe it or not. Now, Putin is set to go abroad and visit North Korea and Vietnam. Now, Russian President, blew, excuse me, Russian President Vladimir Putin is set to visit North Korea and Vietnam in the coming weeks, according to Russia's Vedomosti newspaper. The Vietnam visit is tentatively scheduled for June 19th to 20th, but has not yet been confirmed. Now, Putin's visit to Pyongyang is actively being prepared, confirmed by the Russian ambassador to North Korea. Key issues for the Vietnam visit include energy, military cooperation, and banking support for trade settlements. Putin's trip follows North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's visit to Russia last September. Russia has strengthened ties with North Korea amid its conflict with Ukraine, raising concerns in the West. Putin's previous visit to North Korea was way back in 2000. So, uh, yeah, it's, he's on the move to make some new friends because, you know, obviously... Big part of Russia's economy for a long time was being Europe's gas station, right? They, they sold tons and tons of oil and natural gas to Europe uh, when the, the conflict in Ukraine broke out. A lot of that money dried up. Uh, the Europeans went to alternative sources of energy. And now that left Russia holding a ton of oil and looking for new customers. So uh, these diplomatic missions are not typical for Putin, right? Like he, he, when he goes on uh, foreign tours... I mean, especially since the outbreak of the, the, the conflict, he's rarely outside of Russia. But going to North Korea, which is a long-standing sort of semi-traditional ally of Russia, uh, and then to Vietnam. Vietnam is an interesting one, too, because it's so far away. But it shows that he's trying to, you know, make friends where he can. And uh, in my mind, uh, it's kind of a sense of desperation. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what Vietnam does. Obviously, Vietnam has uh, very unique uh, geopolitical relationships, especially with America and China and now with Russia coming to visit, mm, unclear what the future will hold for that Southeast Asian nation. 
Well, anyways, guys, uh, that'll about do it for our news updates from Tiger and ASEAN Now. Uh, you can always visit thetiger.com to get more updates about what's happening in the land of smiles throughout your day. And uh, please go check out ASEANNow.com so you can get involved in the uh, the comments sections. Like, I've been going there so much lately. It's so fun to see uh, a, a big old community of, uh, of, you know, expats who live and breathe Southeast Asia contributing to community stories, uh, giving their opinions on various aspects of Thai life and Thai culture. And, uh, yeah, it's just a fun way to connect with people uh, from the convenience of your screen. So uh, please uh, go check out ASEAN now. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it for our news. Let me get into the comments section, see what you guys have to say about this stuff. <laughs> 